Welcome to Cooking with Carolina Nephrology. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman, and today we're gonna to be making a Mexican rice meatball soup, and I'm joined by Dr. Barry Gorlitsky. Thank you so much for having me, and the term for the Mexican meatball rice soup <laughs> is albondigas, which is a great word to say in Spanish. The reason that um, I chose this recipe is because uh, my wife is of Mexican descent, and this is her kind of home, home cooked when you're feeling a little sick. In my family and your family is probably matzo ball soup. Exactly, but, or chicken or, soup, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> what we do is we make an albondiga soup, um, which is something we uh, thoroughly enjoy. So, so this is an authentic Mexican recipe. It absolutely is, at least according to my wife. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, well, I'm ready to get started. All right. um, before we go though, tell me, um, so you're gonna be in our Spartanburg office? Yeah, that's right. So I'm really excited to have joined Carolina Nephrology just a few weeks ago, actually, fresh out of fellowship. And um, we've opened up a new office here uh, in Spartanburg. Uh, we're right off of the 296. We also have a dialysis unit in Spartanburg. And we'll be working at uh, Spartanburg Regional Hospital. So we're Great. really excited to be here. And it's, who knew I'd start by cooking? <laughs> 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 Not something they taught us in fellowship, but it's no, something but... I thoroughly enjoy doing at home. And uh, we're excited to be here to uh, present it to you guys. Fabulous. All right, well show us what, so, what we're doing. Yeah, here. so what we want to do first is, uh, first you want to turn the oven on actually, turn your stove on. That's always important. Um, want to kind of medium, medium heat, you want it to just kind of simmer. You don't want to have it necessarily like a rolling boil or something like that. Um, because this is a soup, it'll take a little bit of time to cook. The first thing you do is add water. Um, we add about four cups of water. We've already measured that out. And my wife would watching this, she would be laughing at me because I'm splashing everywhere and that's just classic. Um, the next step is we're going to do uh, chicken broth. Uh, what I like to tell my patients is to use a low sodium chicken broth uh, for any soups, low sodium for pretty much anything. Y'all read the labels, it's really important to look for sodium, look at the sodium content, compare, take the few minutes, it's worthwhile. Once you know what you're using, next time you can just grab it. Agreed. Totally agree, right? Very easy Okay, to do. so four cups of the chicken broth. You're still splashing. Again, I'm going to splash. <laughs> the best thing about this recipe is that it is simple and delicious. So, And you can make a mess. So and you can make a I mess. I mean, what's more fun than that, you know? <laughs> All right, so the chicken broth is in. It's about a 50-50 chicken broth to water. Of course, you could dilute it however you'd like. Um, so the next step, what we would tend to do is start adding some of the vegetables. Okay. So Blake, I'll ask your, your assistance with that. Uh, the first thing I think we can add is the zucchinis. Okay. Some which chopped these, zucchini. Spanish term for that is calabacitas, another one of my favorite terms. Calabacitas. Yes. Um, the reason we chose the zucchini is because zucchini is low in potassium and high in nutrient value. So we really like those types of vegetables. And as we were discussing earlier, we tend to make this soup at home often with tomatoes uh, or potatoes, which are both no-nos for our uh, kidney patients, as we always talk, discuss, because yep. those are high in potassium. potassium. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and add those. Chop zucchini. So the next thing I think we would want to add would be the green beans. Okay. And green beans, you know, you could do frozen green beans, you can do canned green beans, you could do uh, fresh. Of course, we're always going to suggest everyone do fresh, organic, maybe go to the local farmer's market and pick it up. These are frozen, you know, being honest. but. We really like frozen vegetables because... Well, they're not um, preserved in sodium. Exactly. Now, you did say you can use canned green beans. So, I don't know you can that. do whatever you want, <laughs> but, and I appreciate you calling me out on that because it's an important point, we tend not to like canned vegetables because the nutritional value has been taken out over time in the canning process. Fresh or frozen, they tend to keep their nutritional value, not to mention Foods like that that are on the shelf for a long time, they're preserved. And what are they preserved with? Sodium. sodium. And that's our public enemy number one as yes, a complication. So that's why we tend to use frozen or fresh. Uh, the next one, we can add the carrots or the zanahorias. It's one of my favorite uh, Spanish words. Um, and these also are low in potassium, uh, high nutritional value, very low calorie snack. The next thing we can add is the corn. And again, uh, Corn, low in potassium, and we use the frozen corn as well. No problem there. Let's add it in. Okay. All these vegetables, it's a, about a half a cup. You know, to your liking, nothing wrong with adding extra vegetables. I tend to throw in a little extra when the wife's not looking. <laughs> um, next up would be the onions. Okay. Um, you can use the, uh, the Vidalias there. We like to use the sweet Vidalia onions. Um, just gives it a nice flavor. You can use any onions you'd like. 
Uh, this one tends to give us the best flavor, so we like to use that one. Onions are a great way to add flavor to anything that you're cooking without adding salt or without adding extra potassium. We also have uh, garlic, which will come, which does the same thing. Okay. And this is about a quarter cup, give or take. We're gonna add maybe a quarter or so of one jalapeno. If you take the seeds out, it tends to be a little less spicy. Next thing we'll wanna add, and this will be the last for the soup while it simmers, will be the garlic. And you just do, you know, about one clove or so of pressed garlic. We like to use the garlic press, and we're gonna throw that right into the soup. All right, so the second step in the albundigas recipe is the albundigas. Um, we're gonna make the actual meatballs. Uh, so what we uh, have here is we have one pound of uh, ground turkey. Um, you can use uh, lean ground turkey like this. Uh, you wanna try to find ground turkey that uses more white meat than dark meat. That tends to be leaner, um, which is obviously better for, well, everybody really, not just our uh, dialysis and kidney patients. The first thing we're gonna add for the albundigas recipe is we start with one teaspoon of oregano, and we're just gonna go ahead and throw that in. It doesn't have to be exact, and like I said, I like to make a mess, as we know at home. Um, the next one will be one teaspoon of the cumin, or we like to call it cumino, fun word to say. And then what we'll add is a salt and pepper, and uh, half a teaspoon, I like to just pinch it in. I, again, I think it's kind of fun, so we just pinch some salt, a little bit like that. Never seen a nephrologist add salt to anything. <laughs> Can't run for office now. <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. That's right, that's right. Um, and then we'll do the same pepper. The next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and crack one egg. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so this egg is in, and then what we add is one cup of actually uncooked rice, which is what, something I really like in this recipe, because uh, it's easy. And I never cook rice correctly. I don't know about you, but I always burn it if I do it. Um, this is great, it cooks so in the soup, huh? It actually cooks in the soup. It adds uh, lots of flavor to the meatballs because you're actually gonna combine the meat within the rice and you make this kind of meatball, rice, little bit of egg, uh, real nice combination. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the ground turkey and we're gonna do about a pound. This is about 1.3, so I'm gonna go about like that. And then I just like to dive in. Like I said, I like to make a mess. Um, it's fun. So we're just gonna go ahead and dive in and we're just gonna mix everything up. And the egg will actually mix uh, really nicely in there. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pinch off uh, little uh, meatballs. And there's no science to this, there's no trick. Um, I tend to just take like my little pinchers and I just make the meatballs. And this is something fun. Um, if you have kids at home, I know you have an eight-year-old daughter, my daughter's seven. She loves making the meatballs. You know, she gets her hands messy and uh, hers tend to be really small. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so the number of meatballs doesn't matter. You know, it tends to be probably like 12 to 14. All right, so uh, we're to uh, one of my favorite parts, which is uh, dropping the meatballs actually into the soup. And I love that the rice cooks in the meatballs. That's amazing. amazing. I, I actually didn't believe my wife when she first uh, we were first going over this recipe. I said, you don't cook the rice, and she said, you do not cook it. It comes out perfect. It's going to be about an hour or so. So, you know, you're going to just go watch a TV show or something like that. Come back in 45 minutes to an hour. And what you're going to start to notice is that the rice will actually start to kind of break off of the meatball. Um, you'll start to see a little bit of the rice floating in there and that'll tend to tell you that it's pretty much done Give it a good couple stirs. We love to taste test. Mm -hmm. We do you know It's so much fun um, and see what you like some people maybe want a little mushier Let it cook longer if you like it maybe a little bit harder depending on how you do it You can take it off right there, but you're looking at about an hour of a, or so. of a low simmer very low simmer Yeah, you want it um, just a little bit of simmering not a big boil and no like top that. on we tend to leave the top off great you know? That way the kitchen smells beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here we are, and this is our finished product, and man, is it beautiful. Look at what you made for us, Dr. Absolutely, Berlinski. yes, it smells delicious. Um, the last kind of finishing touches for this is going to be adding a little bit of the cilantro. Um, again, if you like cilantro, add a lot. If you don't like cilantro, we don't, don't add, add any. any. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but you go ahead, and I just like to pinch off. I like to use kind of bigger pieces. Um, I, I think it looks nice. You know, mm -hmm. it adds a little green on top, gives it a real nice flavor. It's so funny because the key ingredient to all of this is lime. And if you try it without a lime, it doesn't taste right. Mm. It just doesn't taste right. When you add the lime, it just cuts it slightly and it makes it delicious. But we just like to squeeze some fresh lime right on top. And then if you want to address it a little bit more, you can either add these uh, green onions if you like that. We like to add a little bit uh, during the boiling process. You can also add it at the end. Again, it just looks really pretty. Uh, you want to serve soup piping hot. Um, that's really how uh, it kind of re releases all the flavors the best. 
Mmm. What do you think? That's fantastic. Absolutely. That might be one of the best things we've made. Thank you, my friend. Yes. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> That's a compliment to my wife for sure. Thank She's you. She's an excellent cook. Mmm. It's got a good amount of spice. It's got the lime. It's got the cilantro. It's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Cooking with Carolina Nephrology. Thanks to Dr. Gorlitsky and his wife for the recipe. This is easy to make. It's delicious. It'll fulfill all your healthy eating requirements. And if you want to find more recipes like this and videos, you can visit our website, carolinanephrology.com cooking, and we will see you next time.